Welcome to INS, the International News Service, your source for the most important weird news from across the globe, with news analyst Kevin Harrison, actor, comedian, and musician Mike Wiebe, and professional commentator Brian Camp. INS, the news you need. Like a, a look at anyone's social media uh-huh. is is a look into somewhat fantasy because you uh-huh. don't post what's really going on or what's happening. You post like, oh, this is right. like, you know, you save all your photos for you're on the beach in Cancun or you're, uh, you know, you're hanging out with uh, you're hanging out with Nelly and the rest of the St. Lunatics because you met them in a in a in a Denny's in uh, in outside of in somewhere in missouri and you're like oh fuck that's just nelly oh my god that's the rest of the saint lunatics and then then you go and then you go up on their on their on their tour bus Uh and they're all they're all playing uh they're all playing doom the original (laughs) doom video game oh sure you know them a secret to where you can get the bfg even earlier Mm -hmm. and they're like holy shit Mike Weeby, you're my favorite. Yeah, I love you. Do you want to go on tour opening for the St. Lunatics? I'm like, doing what? And like, just just go out and tell some lovely stories. I bet you have a lot of charming anecdotes. And I'm like, are you do you think that's gonna go well before Nelly gets up there and sings Andale, 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 Mama Ia, Ia, oh oh. And they're like there's only one way to find out. And so can you quit your job and join us? And I'll go, you know what? This idea is so fucking batshit crazy that it just might work. Oh no. And I do. And I have a great time. Mm-hmm. And then when I come, come back, they let me go back to my job because they're so happy that I came back, you know, because at first <laughs> yeah. they're like, you're fired. If you don't show up at noon tomorrow, you're fired. And I'm like, I got, listen. But you go to your Nelly, job at noon? Nelly asked me to do this. And they're like, <laughs> dope, da. Ah. Unless he has a dope verse about me. And then they write a dope verse about everybody at my job. <laughs> anyway, that's, cool that's the kind of thing. Wow. That's, a, you know. You can you that would be a difficult thing to manu that would be easy to manufacture uh-huh. on your Instagram, okay, on your uh your TikTok or whatever. Uh-huh. But if that just happens like yeah. at that moment, I wouldn't be able to I wouldn't be able to just make that kind of shit up. You know, that's why Be Real is the kind of app that I'm a big part of. Is there at least one comedian who goes by the name Be Real? It's gotta be a rapper name, I would think, with a comedian name. It might be a comedian name. I want to be a. I want to be a comedian named Raw Dog. <laughs> How is it spelled? Oh yeah, R A W D A W G. Yeah, but it's okay. all like there's no space in in Raw and Dog. Raw Dog. Raw Dog. Yep. Because everything I say is unfiltered, uncensored, <laughs> and unsane. <laughs> You know, if I mean, if that's about a, if that's about someone who tells the truth, even if when it gets him in trouble, then yeah. I mean, she keeps saying I'm not supposed to be in a mental institution, and then they say no, you're supposed to be here. So kind of unfiltered, <laughs> uncensored, unsane. Oh, raw dog, raw dog. Tonight at the Palladium, raw dog. Y'all ever been taking a shit? That's what it cuts to a cliff. I'm going, y'all ever been taking your shit? It doesn't, it doesn't ever get to the punchline because I don't want to. Just like, it just kind of like teases you with premises. Y'all ever been taking a shit? Like, Unfiltered. Yeah. And it, maybe it cuts to some punchlines, but you don't hear the setup. And then it'll just be like, mm-hmm. and the towel is filled with diarrhea. <laughs> Truth teller, <laughs> uncensored, <laughs> raw dog, and then for unsane, it's just me going. Ah, blah, 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 blah. 
making the blah, 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 and, and doing a, doing a uh, one finger circle that image, you know, that right. that means crazy. Does when you're when the raw dog comes up on the screen, is it punctuated by a steel stamping sound? Ooh. Yes. Okay. Well, it goes ching raw dog, and then you're. <laughs> it's a dog barking twice, but kind of in pain. <laughs> chong chong raw dog. <laughs> Man, we should do that instead of this. You should. Yeah. Wanna... Well, maybe maybe you'll get some raw dog point of view. I mean, you know what? I'm going to promise on this episode there will oh. be a couple raw dog points of views. I got. I do have to ask. That's good. What would happen if raw dog had a meeting? Maybe maybe a conflict with somebody named Phoenix. That cat needs to light fire to his motherfucking litter box. Cha-chung, raw dog. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they would get along. I feel like Phoenix would be a real admirer of I think raw at the dogs. end of the day, they're both, they're both pretty un, uncensored, unfiltered, and right. insane. I think that, I think that, 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 right. that attribute would probably... I mean, I've been doing raw dog so much that it's starting to become my identity, but... <laughs> In fact, I, I uh, for the listener, I I have uh, I've fallen on and on the on and off the wagon when it comes to vaping nicotine. View they're called views, uh-huh. and mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to go ahead and vape a little nicotine. I'm going to just be honest. I'm going to be fucking real. I'm going to be raw. I'm going to be real. I'm going to be uncensored. I'm going to be ching ching raw dog. Arr, arr, and take a look <laughs> at this. You doing that inside? Mm. That's a that's an association, Mike. It's gonna be hard to break. Yeah. What do you mean that's an association? You're gonna be doing it in bed soon. Well, it's just it's, yeah. I do it, it after is. I. At, hey, I do it after I after I be fucking raw dog. <laughs> ching ching. <laughs> arr, arr. <laughs> in the '80s, we used to smoke cigarettes after we had sex. Whoa. And yes, I had a lot of sex in the '80s. But now in this new enlightened time, it's like you look over and you're like, hey, you want to split a vape? Hey, let me get you some of that cinnamon vape oil to go ahead and have a sex after our post-coital uh, afterglow. Ching, ching, raw dog. <laughs> arr, arr. <laughs> it's even better when you do that. Like, the idea that you have to do it yourself. <laughs> hey. so long. That's good. We're living in the 20s, the roaring 20s. Mm-hmm. And by roaring 20s, I mean I roar when I'm in the sack. Ching, ching, raw dog. Arr, arr. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to the International News Service. We're your hosts. I'm Kevin Harrison along with... Brian Camp. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys know who I am. No, uh, who are you again? I'm a little. Uh, I'm just. Um, I don't know. I don't even need to say it that. I don't need to say that I'm ching ching raw dog. <laughs> <laughs> so this week we've got. Well, we're trying something new this week. So on weeks we have the bonus story. We're gonna have Mike do get to know your podcast or some variation. Like, have you heard of this shit? And on weeks where we don't have a bonus story, we're gonna do three news stories. So we've got. Three news stories this week. Yeah. All right, three news stories. Let's okay. let's talk about the news. Stories. Okay, so our For first our international story. Listeners. Can we focus on our international listener this time? I feel like we have we have not spent enough time catering to our Panamanian friends, our Russian friends, our Ukrainian friends, our Australian friends, our French friends, our Denmarkian friends, our Welsh friends, our Scottish friends, our Italian friends, our Czech friends. Our Chinese friends, our Japanese friends, our dirty, our dirty knees friends, our friends from New Zealand, our friends from Brazil, our friends from Canada, our Mexican friends, all of our friends, all of our international friends. We need to spend more time. Shout out to the St. Lunatics. <laughs> Shout out to this. Yes. Well, our, I mean, we, we have about it. We have a story and a half international this week. No, well, that's it's very American of us to think <laughs> a story and a half is all the rest of the world gets. So let's go. So our first story, and I think you guys are really going to like the news source on this one. Our first story comes to us from Coast to Coast AM. Yeah. All right. Mark Ryan's missing out on this one. He's going to hear it eventually. Missing the live. He might be inserting parameters into some sort of AI to do the work for him. 
Mm-hmm. Please. That's gonna be that's gonna be that's gonna happen. It someday mm-hmm. AI will literally do everything for AI, us. He's gonna use AI to replace us, and then it'll just I be like, like maybe. yeah. Like Raw Dog could have a really strong bit about all the things AI is going to eventually do for us. I'll tell you one thing AI can't do, and that's get my dick to stop dribbling. Ching, ching, raw Dog. <laughs> so our first story, oh, it comes to us from uh, Coast to Coast AM. Many symbols of the Soviet Union remain in Russia, but perhaps the most important one is the preserved body of Vladimir Lenin. After Lenin died hmm. in 1924, the body was embalmed and put on public display in a tomb in Red Square. Of course, Lenin's body has not rested peacefully. In 1934, a man entered the tomb with a gun. He shot at Lenin's body and missed before turning the gun on himself. Then in 1959, someone tried to break the glass covering Lenin's corpse, but failed. In 1960, someone did break the glass, but was stopped before he could destroy the corpse. The glass was strengthened and failed to break in 1966 when a man attacked it with a sledgehammer. And in 1973, a man tried to blow up Lenin's body with a bomb, but only managed to blow himself up. Now, 40 years later, another attack has occurred on Lenin's corpse. In 2023, a drunk man climbed over a barrier surrounding Lenin's tomb and intended to steal the corpse. Unfortunately for him, the tomb happened to be closed, so he couldn't manage to open the door. Security guards quickly swooped in and took the man into custody. When the man sobered up, he told police that the last thing he could remember was drinking with a friend. The man was committed to psychiatric treatment for alcoholism. So he's going to spend the rest of his life in a gulag? Probably. Is that... That's good. That's great. It's too bad they didn't just start with a bomb. I think there would have been more. If it's it's like they they allowed the body security people to slowly ramp up their protection in line with what people were doing. But if you just started off with a bomb, right, you could have blown up Lenin's corpse, which would be a cool thing to have by your name. Yeah, yeah. that is true. That would be pretty well. Cool. That's one of the weirder things is there's. I, I looked up, tried to look up information about these people and aside from the two who like I, the guy with the gun obviously meant to kill himself i don't know if the guy with the bomb if he i don't know if that was intentional or not but uh it does it it there's not a lot of information about these people or what happened to them or who they were yeah cuz they're russian and they're they don't want there to be they just kind of mm-hmm. they don't make select cuz listen they do things right over there they don't make celebrities out of all their other people we need we we should look at what russia does oh. a little bit more like what, what do you mean well they just i'm saying they don't make their you know right they don't make all their they don't make celebrities they don't make they don't get you don't get famous doing crimes over there you get yes. in trouble uh, the way it used to be over here i like that you are aligning yourself with yet another brutal <laughs> autocratic regime <laughs> this is I'm not aligning myself i'm just saying that they don't take crime as frivolously Uh that that they have that they have a president that doesn't encourage crime unless it's his own crime laundering well yeah i mean yeah he's fucking putting porn on everybody's laptops (laughs) that is that what biden's is that i'm Mm -hmm. I'm confused (laughs) that's what he put he put porn on that kid on his kid's laptop oh wow oh okay Hmm. Um. Well, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. that is a people do a lot of silly stuff drunk. That's a rough one for mm-hmm. him to. That's a rough prison sentence to sober up for. Oh, when that he, seems like a really? when it seems like a fairly common Russian activity of getting shit housed and doing something completely <laughs> insane. It does yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. It, yeah. It's a. It's almost a cultural, you know, spectator sport. Here's the thing I was thinking. Um, what if someone uh-huh. jumped up on top of a glass coffin uh-huh. and took a shit on top of it? And then that would be what Chuck Berry would want to happen <laughs> to his dead body. Well, I think I think you have a strong argument then. Yeah, if, that might be. A, yeah, like if, if Lennon and Chuck Berry. If you are, were to get caught, do, if I ever get caught doing that, if I've ever been Russia caught doing this to Lennon, I'm going to go. I thought it was Chuck Berry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that 
and see if they let me get away with it. Well, every time I hear about, I I think of, uh, for, this is something y'all know because we all live here in Texas, but Ozzy Osbourne pissing on the Alamo. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And they just banned him from the Alamo. Right. I don't think anything. I mean, that's right. Wasn't that big of a deal. Right. Yeah, I mean, with this and guy, he didn't cause I, any damage. He couldn't get in. He was no, he didn't he was like get, a really he, yeah. basic trespass. Drunk. Mark looks like he is about to kill himself. I will add. Yeah, watching him do this makes me feel bad I had no for what idea. we do. Yeah, like he's he's shrinking waveforms and and enlarging them. We're gonna get some some words there. He just threw his sidle. Threw a headset down with all of his strength. Oh, Uh-oh. oh! For the listener, Mark, you, Mark the, we're worried the about week you. In a row. you. Look suicidal. Yeah. No, I'm just really tired. When yeah. you say tired, <laughs> did you mean tired of of our shit? Do you mean Mostly tired Brian. of existing? No. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's, let's ask you this: uh, Do you think that it's okay? You know how Lennon is in a a glass coffin. Glad yeah. you're Lennon, not jo- not John Lennon. Uh-huh. Do you think it? Do you think it would be okay? To take a shit on a glass <laughs> coffin if it was Chuck Berry's body inside there. Hmm. It seems like something Chuck Berry would do, but uh, yeah. and he would probably enjoy because he yeah. was notorious for enjoying all that kind of stuff. So uh, I think it would be a nice tribute. Okay. That's what I think too. To Chuck Berry, maybe it's... not Lennon. I mean, we don't well, know what well, Lennon both was into. Of them, actually, they. Right. Yeah, are we allowed to go to Lennon's tomb as as card carrying uh, conservative Americans? I mean, we're um, allowed. I think that you know they just warned all Americans to get out of Russia. Well, by the time this came, comes yeah. out, like two weeks ago, but well, that I mean, now I'm now no, they definitely warned go there. all Russians to get out of America. Did they do oh, that? They? Well, now I'm going to keep them. I'm going to keep them here, and I'm going to go over there because I don't play. <laughs> Uh, I don't play. <laughs> right. Maybe maybe a certain comedian has a a tour set for for all major Russian cities. Yeah, well yeah, like like I like to say, uh in America people will watch TV. In Russia, TV watches you take a shit, raw dog. <laughs> <laughs> this you'll hear more about this later, but there's a I I've I've started performing under the name Raw Dog. Uncensored, unfiltered, un unsane. <laughs> So our next story comes to us from Fizz.org, a mm. physics and science news site. Mm. The soda pop trade yeah. magazine. Fizz. Is. Uh, H-Y-S. Bye, Mark. Bye, Mark. Uh, so F-I-Z-Z. P-H-Y-S dot org. So but, low... Well, I mean, that's a misspelling. It's we're, we're F-I-Z-Z. Already in, we're already going to be in a lot of trouble because we're going to have some... We're about to hit some crazy spelling here. Uh, okay, Lo, here we go. Lo Foxon is a data scientist working in the pharmaceutical industry. But in his spare time, oh, I know Foxon him. has spent several years tracking Bigfoot sightings throughout the U.S. and Canada. Foxon then broke down sightings in both countries by states and provinces and factored in data like human population, mm-hmm. forest cover, and the presence of other wildlife. What he found mm. was that the vast majority of Bigfoot sightings... Gotta have an audience. Yeah. What? What? No, go no, ahead. We're just... We're, I, I already know everything that's going on, so you keep, okay. going, keep talking. Okay. What he found was that the vast majority of Bigfoot sightings occurred in areas where bear populations were known to cluster at the time of the sightings. By contrast... Mm-hmm. Does a, hey, yes. hey, does a bear shit in the woods? Yes, that's where bears <clears throat> shit. Ching ching, raw dog. <laughs> arr, arr. <laughs> now I really want Mark to isolate that and just have it at his disposal to insert in the future whenever he feels like it. The vast majority of Bigfoot sightings occurred in areas where bear populations were known to cluster at the time of the sightings. By contrast, where there were few or no bears, there were few to no Bigfoot sightings. Foxon also pointed mm. out that bears are similar in size to people and have been observed behaving and moving in ways similar to humans, such as standing or walking on hind legs. 
In the paper Fox on published, he ultimately suggested that most, if not all Bigfoot sightings were actually sightings of black bears. I also looked at Fox on Twitter and at the top of his page, he'd published new data suggesting that Loch Ness monster sightings were actually just eel sightings. Oh, well, this guy is just one of the, he's one of, we know him in the, in the foot community is one of the bigger assholes in town. Right. So the foot um, community knows him as an asshole. Shit. A lot of body parts. Yes. Mm-hmm. He's a debunker. Uh, he's um he is someone uh-huh. who delights in hearing people with stories. It's humiliating to to have a thing happen uh-huh. to you like like what? Maybe get a bunch of black bears uh-huh. standing around okay. while a Bigfoot holds you up. I mean, can a can a big can a can a bear? You've seen the a giant bear paws. Mm-hmm. Yes, they're big. They've got giant uh, claws. Do you think a bear can, with one hand, hold a human being up and yeah, no grip thumb. it grip it around both uh-huh. wrists and hold a human being up? Okay. And yeah, I could see how I could see how bear claws could rip clothes off, but they they could. You think a bear could hold you up, and you think a bear could rip rip your clothes off without scratching uh-huh. you? Because I've never had scratches on me, and just stand uh-huh. there and hold me up uh-huh. and point at my genitals and and naked naked cold bare bottom as my legs flail uh-huh. around and just point. Yeah. You think that? Do you think a bear could do that? I do you think do you think a bear could do that? Just say that. I, Just say yes or no. It's a yes or no question. I don't know. Can that... a bear physically hold a man up? Answer the question, Kevin. <laughs> You know, I'm just reporting on Fox Fox Sun's answer. You know what? But I'm asking you. I'm asking asking you. I'm not asking Fox on, which of course, yeah. Oh, Fox on. I'm named after fucking. I'm named after fucking Tucker Carlson channel or whatever. Mm -hmm. Low Fox on. Yeah. What? Yeah. It's what that name is is stupid. Well, stupid uh, made up name. Yeah. Obviously, Mike. I'll answer the question. Obviously, a bear couldn't do that. A bear can't do that. Obviously, a bear can. A bear can laugh. <laughs> sure. Right. Can a bear point? Mm-hmm. But a bear. A bear does not have that thumb, uh-huh. that item that allows it to 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 hold uh-huh. something like that up with one okay. hand. I mean, occasionally you'll see a bear use two hands uh-huh. and as like a bear that to and like with a bottle and kind of use that. But it's a very clumsy. Uh-huh. Bears are powerful. Are I'll give you bottle? that. Bears are powerful. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I'll give you that. They can't. Yeah, they can stand on their hind legs. They're capable of. And they are capable of joining in in humiliation, uh, but they're not capable of <laughs> they're planning capable that of kind of a thing out. Right. Well, they're, <laughs> they're, they're not capable of. They're not capable uh-huh. of inciting that they're not capable and and at some point a bear would get tired of holding and it would just want to you know probably just you know tear you up or whatever and cut you up or whatever bears do i don't know i didn't see you know there's that movie grizzly man Uh that's about that guy timothy treadwell that went up into the mountains to follow around the bear and you know i i'm one of the few people that has heard the tapes okay because there's a tape of his last moments, an audio tape right. of his last moments. So I don't know if you guys have seen the film, but he was out recording bears and there's an audio tape and very, Werner Herzog is the director. Or he, he listens to it and you see his reaction of him listening to it, but you don't ever hear right. it. And he says, you should never play this tape because you, you hear what's leading up to it. And apparently it's violent and brutal. I've heard the whole tape. I'm one of the few people uh-huh. that have, and it is, Essentially, it sounds like a Bigfoot cajoling a bear into trying to hold a person. Uh And obviously, it goes awry. The bear mauls and kills the person. So I just think that this is... This is just, it's, it's just, it's humiliation. It's a hat on top of a hat of humiliation. Right. It's bad enough, bad enough that you've gone through this, but then to have someone uh-huh. under the guise of science uh-huh. try to deny the reality you know yeah. you've lived right that's that's yeah. the insult and 
and the whole eel thing. I mean, what? Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. What is that? Like maybe a giant eel monster, but of course uh, he wants yeah. to minimize. But I mean, what does he say? Catoblepus is what does he say? <laughs> yeah. uh, the abominable snow, snowman is what, uh, do you, you know, yeah. but, uh, what are his answers there? And of course he'll have one with no real data, except here's an animal that exists that I'm just going to decide arbitrarily is what people are seeing and reporting. Uh -huh. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. I mean, you don't think I'm embarrassed. Okay. What's it? I just, I was like, he, okay. You don't think I'm already embarrassed that my pale white nude body. Uh -huh. <clears throat> it is pale in the, in the cold. Uh -huh. mm. I'm a little bit out of shape. I know oh, we, that. We're aware. It's freezing. I'm held aloft. My my nude legs uh -huh. and bare bottom. The only thing blocking the wind is my bare bottom. <laughs> I'm flailing around, uh -huh. saying, "Stop it!" My clothes are completely ripped up, ripped apart. It was a brand new pair of trousers. They're ripped down the back. Trousers. I've got all types of forest creatures mocking and laughing, <laughs> and this bigfoot woman. Uh -huh. Big sternum, but still two giant milk jugs between <laughs> pointing at my <laughs> pointing at my delicate uh -huh. and laughing up a storm, <laughs> laughing with a cackle that just it calls out all over the mountains and reverberates. Yeah. Wait, is, can you refresh our recollection for the listener who might be a little who hasn't heard about <laughs> some of this? <laughs> And then you've got all these other woodland uh -huh. animals yucking it up. You don't think I'm not mortified by that? And then I got this asshole running around saying that it's not real, that it didn't happen, or that a bunch of fucking bears <laughs> did it? Are you kidding me? I don't know. Yeah. I think this guy should be... Honestly, I, I hope this guy gets framed for trying to shit on Lennon's tomb. <laughs> wow. And gets happened. everything that happens to him that goes along with that. Ooh. I'm going to get this guy... Wasted, go into Lennon's tomb and go like, you know what? Go give him a golden shower, whatever, Shit. whatever's gonna, t whatever, whatever it's gonna take to ha to make him experience a tenth of the humiliation that I have. Bold words from Mike Weeby, but heartfelt. I think we can all agree. So sorry, oh, I'm sorry I got real. I'm sorry I got worked well, up. There, we, we know it's an important issue for you. You're out there on the front lines fighting this kind of discrimination. I don't know if it's discrimination. I think it's... It's discriminatory. Okay. <laughs> Take it back. It's exactly what it is. All right. Okay, so... Well, what do you think the Scots think of this? Have oh, the Scottish responded? As far as I've seen, the Scottish have not noticed one guy's marginally followed Twitter page. No. Well, if we're on it, then I know that the Ness heads are all over it, too. I'm, so. sure, I'm sure they're... They're, they're they're working on making I expect their... some sort of response from the many clans that have been documented in one of our favorite reference books. Mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings? Nope. What reference book? The many clans, historical clan names of Scotland. We read out of them in mm -hmm. episode. I don't know the number, but when I was in the uh, when I was out on the oh, road, Dracula's tour. Okay. Yeah. See, we we are we are a friend to our. Scottish brethren and sistren. We don't mm -hmm. minimize the beings that have plagued them for centuries. We don't try to find ways to yeah. deny the existence of things they hold dear through pseudoscience uh -huh. like fox on. Yeah, well, we've got some ding dongs with fake names <laughs> out to out to make people feel worse than they already do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When they when they're in, in thrown into situations that there's nothing they can do about. <laughs> So our last story comes to us from the University of Chicago News. Oh, you yeah, shy new. Shy town. One of the biggest toy fads of the late 1990s was the Tamagotchi, a small egg-shaped keychain with a tiny screen and three buttons. The purpose of the Tamagotchi was to act as a digital pet, which owners would then feed, play with, train, and clean up after, just like a real pet. Now, researchers at the University of Chicago have improved on the Tamagotchi with a living pet in a digital device. 
They developed a smartwatch built around a, an electronically conductive slime mold, and to keep the watch working, users have to keep the slime mold alive. The creator said they wanted to see if bringing tech gadgets to life would change our relationships with them. So they built a small watch-sized enclosure and then placed the slime mold on one side. As the slime mold was fed a mixture of water and oats, it grew to the other side of the enclosure, forming an electrical circuit that activated the watch. If the slime mold was ignored, it would go dormant and the circuit would be cut off. Now, so apparently it's very hard to kill a slime mold. So like Tamagotchi, which can, which can be reset if your digital pet dies, slime molds can be revived months or even years later if you start feeding them again. Researchers made five slime mold watches, which they gave to five participants for two weeks. The first week, they asked volunteers to feed the slime molds and write about how they felt. The participants were very excited named their watches, and even left them with friends so they could feed them on schedule. The second week of the experiment, however, they were given the instruction to let the slime mold go dormant by stopping the food, and all of the participants reflected on this with grief and despair. Researchers said, they, uh, said this showed the incredible emotional attachment people put on devices if they discover they have a living thing inside of them, as opposed to devices that you just recharge when you sleep. Now, all this does is show that five people who would volunteer for an experiment like this form weird, unnatural connections to slime molds. Did it, did it say, yeah. did it give a bottom line number of the amount of money that was spent on creating electronic <laughs> smart devices with slime molds inside of them? How much did, this, how much did the University of Chicago spend of the public funds the, the on this research that, with it as we all know most most good groups for study <laughs> uh, number in the fives you can draw a lot of good conclusions from what <laughs> five people who volunteer for a study think yeah so just the scam the scam continues how, how do you feed the slime mold there's like a there's like a hole in the side and you put water and and the oat, the water and oat mix in the side and then close the hole up and then oh, that's right. it grows over. What does a fucking slime mold look like? Can you see it? Yeah, I mean, it just looks like a looks like slime. I mean, really, it looks like you know, like green or mm -hmm. kind of hazel. They're actually Is it moving around. No, they're single celled. They just they. I mean, they move a little bit. They more like mostly ooze. acid damage, right? Wait, acid damage. What's it? What's the hit dice? <laughs> no, uh, it's a. I mean, you can't use conventional weapons on them. I know that. Yeah, it's gonna yeah, melt like... your sword. So, how do you get slime molds? In a, a watch. I mean, you just, you, they're like, they're a single celled organism. So you just, you know, yeah. you, you probably order them from a lab. I think you can collect them in like ponds and lakes and stuff. And then you just put it in there. They have a little container. You just put it in the little container. They put it on one of the diets. I'm sure one of these scientists has a cousin who grows slime molds ethically, specifically for scientific purposes, because it wouldn't be right to take a slime mold from a pond. So they're, I mean, they're, they're a little more expensive, but you can, you put a price on, on science. Are you saying this is all funded by big slime mold to, uh, slime molds can power watches. Well, they're, so they the ones they got are electrically conductive because they're, they're mostly water. Well, I'll never, I'll never buy another watch battery again. Cause I can get slime molds from my <laughs> goddamn underwear. Ching, ching, <laughs> raw dog. <laughs> 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 I tell the truth. I tell the truth. I'm a nasty guy. <laughs> um, yes. Well, I mean, I don't know. I guess that's a fun thing. I just, I don't want fucking slime mold on my, on my fucking arm all the time. Yeah. You know, right. like, I don't like the idea of this gross, weird little thing in there. Tamagotchis were cute. Uh -huh. They were cute little things. And they came in little fucking eggs. Right. I definitely see a market for something like this where I could see kids going crazy as like, you got your watch pet or something, except that yeah, I guess so. Except that they said explicitly they didn't intend to commercially produce them, right? Because then it would have value. Yeah, See, this is about padding their pockets, yeah. not anybody else's. Well, I feel like they could make a yeah. lot of money selling like it's real life Tamagotchi. Then they would have to improve it or something like that, yeah. and then they don't want to do that, right? They just want to experiment and go, oh, people, people love stuff, I guess, or don't. I don't know. Right. Here's the numbers. Gonna, Here's the raw data. This will all end up with, say, everybody's house is going to have a four-by-four four 
windowless mm-hmm. box with a chimpanzee in it that you have to keep alive to keep the power running in your house. Is that is um, that the future they're envisioning? I, I'm pretty yeah. sure that is, yes. That thing you said. Yes, classic. Fucking eggheads. Mm-hmm. When will they learn? The Chicago eggheads. I don't know. I do think I just it's gross. I just don't want some fucking gross shit on my yeah. own. Yeah. If I was gonna do that, if I was gonna do that, I would just uh I would wear a swatch. <laughs> well, gotcha swatch. I wouldn't want to be swatch right now. Yeah. You just got boint. Do you guys wear watches? I, I will tell you guys this about about having a uh so it'll measure your exercise, you know, when you tell it to, but it'll also be like, Well, your heart rate's up. We decided you're exercising now, and this counts towards your your exercise minutes for the day. And you're getting you're getting a little busy with your partner. Sometimes mm-hmm. you look down and you're like, "Oh, I got all my exercise for today." Oh, that's right. And then oh. wear your watch when you're. <laughs> I mean, you know, sometimes sometimes you're not thinking about all those things. Hold on, are you married? No. Whoa. Well, then you shouldn't be doing that at whoa, all. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, this is making me a little uncomfortable. This is not... <laughs> we're, yeah. crossing, we're crossing a line. There's a lot of people uh, listening to us who live very chaste lives, and this is something that I think it's, you might yeah, be a mark to take this out. It's not our listenership at all. Uh, the, the, now the Danes have sex clubs. I can't, yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably not. The good people, the good international people or to them just national so right we're the international we're we're the international news service did y'all know that's what we yeah. were calling this oh mm-hmm. mm-hmm. as mike weeby i have to say kevin yes. tisk tisk as raw dog i have to say <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> ching, ching, raw dog arr, arr. So that wraps up another week at the International News Service. Find us across social media at International News Pod. Email us at internationalnewspod at gmail.com. The hosts of INS live inside your digital devices too. Please don't forget to feed us with listens and reviews. Check out the INS merch store at Redbubble and our Patreon. And don't forget to check out our subreddit at r slash INS pod. We'll see you next week. And we'll see you in the dog house. <laughs> <laughs>